The Rays are looking for their first win of the spring. Would they get it today? We'll show you highlights from Port Charlotte. The road to Rio runs through Central Florida as 18-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps is back in town. And the Orlando City Lions getting all set for their season to begin. What can fans expect on the pitch? It's straight ahead. Welcome to your sports tonight. I'm Rock Roddy. How about some spring training baseball, huh? How about game number two for the Rays and Orioles? This one in Port Charlotte. Now, starter Erasmo Ramirez scheduled for two innings. A lot of the Rays players have been saying they believe the Rays lineup is going to be potent this year. Guess what? The bats woke up in this one. They're built on pitching and defense, so we're going to start with some pitching. Erasmo Ramirez, swing and a miss. Strikeout, movement, two scoreless innings, three Ks. Bottom of the first. Steve Pierce, he's the new guy, he's local. This one down the line and right. Doubles in Desmond Jennings and it's 2-0 Rays. Now bottom of the second, Desmond Jennings. Boy, he was good yesterday and today a double. Decker scores, Jennings two for two, two doubles, two RBIs. Corey Dickerson, this is a mammoth home run. A camera guy, move up, move up. This one landed on the roof. Rays had 17 hits. Rays win big 10-3. You know, I kind of want to see some pitchers at second and bat, and luckily I got a good pitch to hit, and, you know, I tried to be short to the ball, and it worked out. Yeah, I mean, I just tried to, you know, have a good approach today, uh, see some pitches, make solid contact, and uh, that's what I'm looking for at the beginning of spring training and uh, trying to see good pitches. Friday, it's Rays and Boston Red Sox and Fort Myers. Chris Archer is going to get the start. They'll see their buddy David Price. Saturday at the Orioles in Sarasota. Sunday, it's Minnesota in Port Charlotte. And then they're back in Fort Myers on Monday for a day game against the Red Sox. The Orlando Magic off today. They're hosting the Phoenix Suns on Friday. Today was a day to gloat, though, after taking care of the Chicago Bulls on Wednesday night. Rookie Mario Hazonia had a breakout game with a career I-21. That was... Ilya Sova, Aaron Gordon shows he's not only a slam dunker, Nick Vucevic led the way with 24, Magic played a lot better defensively, and Coach Scott Skiles says that's where they're looking for. He felt their energy on the defensive end of the floor was good. Look who's back in Orlando, Michael Phelps, first time in 12 years competing at Arena Pro Swim Series at the YMCA Aquatic Center. Phelps has 22 Olympic medals, and he still has the urge to compete. In fact, he's trying to qualify for the Olympics. Now, he's going to compete in four events at the Arena Pro Swim Series this week at the YMCA Aquatic Center in Orlando. Oh, we're close now. We're almost to this season opener. Orlando City preparing for its second MLS season. Right now, Sports Network's Despina Barton has a preview of Sunday's opening match against Real Salt Lake. May the supporters come marching in, the purple fill the bowl, and the team step out once again in front of the city beautiful. Just this time around, stronger, smarter, and determined to make a deeper run to the playoffs. We're a year wiser. Uh, we know what to expect. Um, everyone knows um, how the games are. There's no easy games, whether it's home or away, and every, every team can contend for the title. This group who sat just outside a playoff berth a year ago reinforced its roster this offseason, adding new faces through the draft and much-needed experience through trades. This is my first time as a professional to go through preseason, but all the guys have told me this has been a very serious preseason, so he's been taking every game as if it's a final, right? So we've been very prepared and going at it since day one. So. Now that day one began on January 25th with the first day of practice and will come to a close on Sunday here at the Citrus Bowl as Orlando City hosts Real Salt Lake in its second MLS season home opener. Now it's a new look squad that coach Adrian Heath says will show a few different formations all in hopes of spiking offensive production with keeping Kaka at the forefront. I just think that we're going to be a bit better around him as well and I fully expect that we will uh, probably see the more of Kakai this year than we did last year. I, I think he's going to score more goals as well this year, which if we can get him in 12, 15 goals, it's going to be huge for us moving forward. The team improvement showed through this preseason, but sustainability and health will be the number one concern, especially during a season that stretches nine months. We stay healthy. Um, we had a few injuries last year, and, uh, and like I said, we didn't know really what to expect as a team. And uh, this year we know what to expect, and if we stay healthy, I think uh, those, those games will get a lot more uh, points. Finish out those games that ending with ties. Despina Barton, Bright House Sports Network.
While the USF women's basketball team is focused on finishing strong and trying to get a high bid for the NCAA tournament, the USF women's team is picking up some hardware. Senior Salita Stringfield, sixth player of the year award, first player in program history to win the award. Senior Courtney Williams, she's a unanimous all-conference first team, third consecutive on the first team. Williams was the leading scorer in the conference during the regular season. And Katia Laksu, a unanimous all-freshman selection and all-conference second team, and Alicia Jenkins, all-conference third team. Conference will announce Freshman of the Year Award on Friday. Well, the Buccaneers had a pretty solid showing on offense last season, may look to secure some help at the line of scrimmage, and maybe some wide outs to strengthen their firepower. Right House Sports Network's Tanitra Batiste, catching up with Bucks beat writer for the Tampa Tribune and BHSN contributor Roy Cummings to talk about the real focus in free agency and the upcoming NFL draft. The start of free agency is just a few days away. Contracts can't be signed until March 9th, but teams can talk to players starting on March 7th. After going downhill late last season, Tampa Bay is now set to shore up its defense with plenty to spend on free agents, but they may wait to make moves in a defense-rich draft. Bucks beat writer Roy Cummings says with free agency moves, it just depends. It depends on, you know, on the offensive side what Logan Mankins wants to do. If he wants to retire, um, they could eventually jump into that. Uh, area as well and look for some offensive linemen but I think the real focus is going to be on defensive end and uh, probably in the secondary. Cummings doesn't think the Bucks will necessarily make a big splash in free agency because of that rich crop of defensive players in this year's draft and GM Jason Light has hinted at how the team looks at this draft class. It is a strong group of players at certain positions that we do have a need at but you know we've we've taken the approach the last couple of years of best player available. Now Cummings also says the Bucks are in great position to address gaps on the edge and in the secondary because of the talent in the draft and free agency who could work well in a hybrid defense. You know, the timing is just right. They uh, they want some help at the defensive end position. They can certainly get that early in the draft and even maybe in the middle round. Same thing at cornerback. They can get a Vernon Hargraves early on or they could wait uh, until the second or third round, get a guy like Artie Burns out of Miami and, and still fill the need in, in the draft. So I think that's going to have an impact as well on what happens in free agency. Agency. And ultimately, Cummings says the Bucks can be encouraged by success in free agency last year with their later additions to the team. Take Sterling Moore last year. By the time that he got into the lineup and started making an impact, everybody was like, oh yeah, hey, that wasn't a bad pick. And don't forget this, some of the best free agents the Bucks picked up a year ago were guys that they didn't pick up until August. Another late but great addition to the Bucks, center Joe Hawley. Tampa Bay hopes winning this offseason translates into wins on the field next season. Tanitra Batiste, Bright House Sports Network. High School Baseball, Lakewood Spartans taking on Boca Siega Pirates. This was our Bright House Sports Network Game of the Week. A lot of eyes on Bo Bichette, the son of Dante Bichette, the great major leaguer. Here now, Rishi Barron and our new baseball analyst, Eddie Cartieri. Our first baseball broadcast of the season, Rishi Barron, Eddie Cartieri. Boca Siege, a 2-1 win over Lakewood. Eddie, though, we got to see potentially a first-round draft pick in Bo Bichette, and he didn't disappoint. Not at all, and, and he might not have much to show for it, but, boy, he did some things that are eye-opening. Uh, he's a tremendous talent. Uh, you know, he drew some walks, so he showed a good eye. He can run. He's got arm strength. Uh, he's a great fielder, and uh, I've had the pleasure of watching him hit, like I said earlier, and he, he can swing a bat. He's got some power. Three steals. He scored a run. You see one of them there. And Miles Jones, the hero, though, for Boca Siega. This was an RBI that tied the game all up. Right. Miles had a good day at the plate, and uh, Bogey executed that hit and run play successfully a few times. And uh, very well played ball game. Great game to win, tough game to lose. Bach scoring what would be the go ahead run for Bogey, and then they would close it out in style with a little pickoff action. Right. Well, that little lefty Pedrov did a tremendous job, showed no fear at all, just went after every hitter. Didn't matter who they were. and. Close the game out for Bogey. Bogey wins it 2-1, snapping a three-game skid for Eddie Cartieri. I'm Rishi Barron. Let's send it back to you. And our upcoming game of the week in boys baseball Friday night in Central Florida. It's a good one. It's a Popka taking on West Orange. It'll be at 7 o'clock on Bright House Sports Network. Austin Lyon and David Holbrook on the call.
Coming up, the Firestone Grand Prix is less than two weeks away. We've got a story of a rookie driver who is pumped to race in downtown St. Pete. And a press box panel debate. Tom Krasnicki, 620 WDA. Rick Brown, todayspigskin.com. There's going to be some fireworks. you got to see this.